What's up, Divi Nation? Welcome to Divi Chat. How is everybody? It is six minutes after, so technically we're a little bit early tonight. Pretty mm-hmm. proud of us. It was a close one. Like, this one could have gone way long, but here we are, and I'm excited about this topic that we've got today talking about problem clients, problem projects, and how to make sure you have a contract that covers your butt. And I'm like... I don't ever really want to talk about this stuff because contracts are hard and we don't like them. But I'm excited to have our pal Nathan Ingram visiting, who you may have heard of from Monster Contracts fame. So he's going to help us uh, deconstruct what he his approach to all of this and tell us a little bit about Monster Contracts. I'm going to share an experience that I had very recently, and then the rest of the gang is going to share theirs as well. So before we dive on in, why don't we do our introductions? Hey guys, Sarah Oates here from Endure Web Studios. You can catch me at endure.com.au or Endure Web on the socials. I have misplaced my glasses, so you know, I'm looking a bit different tonight, but that's okay. <laughs> that's me. <laughs> hey everyone, Tim Streifler here, broadcasting from San Clemente, California. And you can find me online at divilife.com, where I have all my Divi plugins, child themes, layouts, and tutorials. And WPGears.com, where I have my Divi Business Expert course with, with my pal, David Blackman. Wait a minute. Tim's wearing glasses and Sarah isn't. Did you steal Sarah's glasses? We actually have no. really similar shaped we, glasses, which yeah. is funny. We totally do. <laughs> Wait but yeah, a no, minute. I didn't steal hers because <laughs> right, I good. have always had mine because yeah. I always need them. And he might have even had the shape before me, so I might have stolen the shape off him. Oh, so you took I don't know. Stolen. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> I don't know. We, Guys, we let's both work this awesome out later. What do you matter. say? <laughs> mm-hmm. We say we work this out later. My name is Stephanie Hudson, you guys. I'm repping Focus WP, as always, where we help agencies and freelancers and solopreneurs to scale and grow by focusing on what they love and outsourcing the rest. You can find out more about our uh, on-demand services at focuswp.co and... Come join us in our Facebook group, Focus on Your Biz, B-I-Z, where we have a great time over there and help each other, support each other in our businesses. Well, hey, everybody. Super excited to be here. My name is Nathan Ingram. I am a growth coach for WordPress business owners. I have been uh, building and managing websites for clients since 1995, a very, very (laughs) long time. Nice. Um, (laughs) I started coaching folks doing WordPress stuff with clients about eight years ago. And one of the big needs that I found out of hundreds of coaching conversations was the need for a great contract. So I took my agency contract and put a name on it called Monster Contracts. And that's been out for a couple of years now. Uh, you might also have seen me on iThemes training. We do a few webinars every week around iThemes and WordPress type stuff. And so I'm out there as well. I'm from Birmingham, Alabama, the home of the greatest WordCamp in all of WordCamps, which is called WP Y'all which was unfortunately yeah. unfortunately postponed because of COVID again. Such so, a bummer. Right? Yeah. Tell them, tell them your URL, Nathan. My personal URL at monstercontracts.com or nathaningram.com. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, I am super bummed. I was going to be at um, Birmingham. I was even going to give a talk and then it got postponed. I was really yeah. excited because I saw Nathan IRL, the recurring <laughs> revenue retreat. Yes. A month or so ago, whenever that was. And that was awesome. So he and I got to know each other. I got to meet his daughter who he brought along with him, which was yep. also awesome. And um, so because his conference is called WP Y'all, I, that's why I said, I don't know if any of you saw the social post for this, but I was like, I, I almost titled this episode CYA Y'all. <laughs> cover your cover your ass, y'all, because yeah. that's, awesome. that's the CYA, y'all, uh, because that's what your contract is there for, right? This is like, it's like the fire insurance in your house. It's the one thing that is so useful to have and you hope you never need it. Um, totally. So, Sam, why don't you break it down, what we're talking about with our contract, and maybe mention the difference between that and a proposal. Yeah, absolutely. So a contract is the legal bits of uh, your agreement with your client. Um, And and I would say it it has two parts. One is the CYA cover your ass component. um, But also, it's just a way to make sure everyone's on the same page. Um, I mean, I guess your your agreement proposals kind of uh, for that too. But um, a contract doesn't have to be scary and it doesn't have to just be filled with uh, legal mumbo jumbo. And actually, 
uh, it probably shouldn't have too much of that. Um, but yeah, so it, it's really there to protect you, but also to protect your client as well. Um, and so I think, uh, the, con the, ever evolving contract is a common thing with web designers because every time you get burned by a client, you add in something to make sure that never happens again. And so it's one of those things where it's like, no matter what you start from, you're always going to be adding to it. Uh, just because that's how we learn. We learn from our mistakes. And then we try to make sure they never happen again by, by adding things that protect us. So, um, for those who don't know, including Nathan, I'm the resident definer here on Divi Chat. And so I do my best to define things. And then we spend the rest of the episode uh, correcting me, typically. So. Oh, whatever. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's not so much a definition sometimes as it is just if we're using terminology or talking about yeah. things, we just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. And Tim like a contract. loves his yeah. job as the yeah. designer. <laughs> I do. Yeah, no. And honestly, it that, that's how my brain works. Whenever I, I start something, it's like I have to be organized. I have to start with, okay, here's what I'm going for. And then I can, you know, break it down further. And so it's, it's almost me defining is almost doing what I, the way I think. So um, anyways, let's get started. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to um, start with a story. Now, this isn't this episode is not just it's not just a sales pitch for Monster Contracts, but I just have a personal experience, and I was telling Nathan about it, and I was like, "Hey, do you want to come on Divi Chat and talk about it this week?" And and he graciously accepted. So this was all very last minute, but I had for the first time ever, and I'm. I've only been building websites for one year less than Nathan because I my first HTML was ninety six. So man. we'll just we'll just get our walkers and see ourselves out <laughs> after the show. Um, and we're sitting here with Afghans on our laps too. Uh, you should know both of us. Um, but I had someone send me a letter of termination last week. It was. I'm not going to say I was that upset about it. They were a very difficult client. It was one of those situations where it just wasn't a good match. They were hard to work with. I, I my team, like a couple things got dropped. Uh, this was in my agency, not at Focus WP. So don't be nervous. <laughs> but this was like, you know, there was just some things that happened that, oh, uh, it was just bad communication and a, a, a laundry list of things that just should have been flags at the beginning, maybe. But anyway. So they sent a letter of termination. Again, in all those years, never happened. And I saw the email come in. What's that? Is this midway through a project or is this like a maintenance client? No, no. It was um, like a week and a half before we were supposed to launch a right. full-blown website. Yep. And so we'd gone through multiple. We'd given them a whole extra round of revisions on their design like their design rounds we do doubled what they should have gotten because they complete they changed all their brand colors midway so this oh, is wow. the kind of thing we're talking about and so that's so you guys get the sense of where we're where we're at here and so we had all kind of issues and um and this was the one i've mentioned it before where we were scheduling meetings over five time zones so even that was just complicated and whatever. So anyway, they sent me this. I see the subject line of the email pop up and I was in the middle of something else. And I saw it and I kind of smirked and I I waited until my current thing was done. Before, Like I could have stopped what I was doing and gone and been distracted by it, but I didn't even feel really stressed. Like I, there was a little bit of nervousness, but I knew that I had my contract in place. And so if you have ever been in a situation where things go awry and you don't feel confident about your contract, you know that gut-wrenching feeling where you are terrified. And so I had to just thank Nathan and give him a shout out. And then I, I opened it up and it so clearly state, they said like, you know, they said this notice, they've paid their deposit and they wanted everything handed over to them. We were a week and a half from launch guys. So, yeah. and it clearly says in that contract, if you begin, a certain if you begin phase three which is development technically you owe full the full balance nice. and it's all spelled out on a document which they signed so all i had to do was attach that put screenshots and say what we did now i didn't even charge them all of that because uh, for other many reasons but yeah and i did yeah, whatever there's all kind it's of different nice to it, meet but... in the middle even if you're 
pulling on the contract, there is something nice about not being an asshole in the process. Mm -hmm. I think. Right. Yeah. And I well, was going to ask a, even for just a little bit, but then I read the thing and I was going through it and I already had gotten a hint from somebody else who had spoken to one of them that they were waiting. Seriously. They were waiting for us to say so they could fight. Like they wanted to fight. And I'm like, yeah. I broke down all the numbers and I was like, between splitting it with this co-op that I was with and blah, blah, blah. I was looking to like, it was going to end up coming to me if I won that battle, like another 350 bucks. And I'm like, yeah. I don't have the energy. Not worth it. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, and that's a beautiful thing about the contract too, is you can choose to enforce it, right? Like you, you yeah. don't have to enforce it. You can say, you know what, like, let's just, you know, end it here, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I agree on this, but you have it in your back pocket, right? So it's like it, you have the ability to choose if and when you're going to enforce certain parts of it. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, and the, the contract, the monster contract especially, is it's heavily weighted on the developer side. And I, I've had a couple of clients ask me about that. And my response is, I mean, it's my contract. If you want to make some, you know, we can negotiate some of those points if you want to ahead of time. But I mean, if, it's, it's pretty reasonable. But there are things like you talked about, you know, if you start the development phase, you know, you're going to pay that we're committed now for the rest of the work. And things, so, you know, some other things that are similar to that. But I mean, ultimately, it it. It puts you in a strong position so that you can do exactly like when I hear you tell that story, I'm like, that's exactly what I was after. It puts you in a yeah. strong position to negotiate or to, you know, like you could have gone to court and won the case because it's clearly spelled out. But, you know, you want to be a nice person and, you know, be reasonable and whatever, but it gives you the strongest possible negotiating position. Boom. Well said. So in the chat, if you guys are listening live, um, either uh, on YouTube or Facebook, let us know if you have a contract that you feel confident about. And if so, where, where did, you know, how did you do it? Um, of course, we, we should, I should have led with this. We are not lawyers and we do not play <laughs> lawyers on YouTube either. So, you know, you make these choices. Also Sorry. Are also very true. Even states are different, right? Sometimes in the US, so, um, so yeah, you have to still do your due diligence with all of these things. But um, I know, like, even before I got um, Nathan's contract, like Tim said, I would, <laughs> after every single project for literally years, I would be like, well, I don't want that to happen again. And I would go and I would change something <laughs> in the contract. And I remember having a feeling, I like had an epiphany one day and I'm like, I haven't changed my contract in a really long time. Do you guys remember like hitting that? Like that's a milestone to yeah. me, like where I hit this point where I'm like, okay, I'm not just flying blind and just holding on white knuckling this whole thing, you know, like I kind of maybe have a little figured out. Yeah. So, and yeah. you did just bring up a very important point. I'm not a lawyer. I'm a web developer. You should have a lawyer review a contract and then try to sell them a website. That's that's the way I look at it. Boom. Um, <laughs> Love it. So, but there's a lot of different kinds of contracts out on the web. You know, in, in my coaching experience with folks, usually people tended to have nothing, which is awful, uh, or you know, the contract killer, whatever it's called. That's mm. like you know, mm -hmm. one page of plain English. That's not enough. Or they got grabbed some legal Zoom, whatever contract that they don't even understand what's in it. Right. Right. And right. so none of those are really great. Um, and, and, you know, if you go get an attorney to write a contract, they're going to give you a legally good contract. But it's probably doesn't pertain to the specific things about web development and website management that we need processes yeah. and, you know, what's covered and what browsers am I designing for and all these sorts of things. Um, and so, also clients really freak out when they see the, the really strict language. So I think there is something about it. Like you need it to cover your butt, but you also don't want it to be super, super legal sounding because as soon as a client sees that, they start to freak out, I think. Right. Yeah, I can't agree more. Sorry, so, I interrupted you. No, that's so, you know, I, I think the it, hitting a good sweet spot where you're there's a lot of plain English, but there's still some legal wording that needs to be there. Uh, that's that's what I tried to do with monster contracts and whatever you use, just you, you need to have a contract. Uh, you know, it's, you don't need a contract for good clients. You need a contract for bad clients and you never know whether you get a good client or a bad client on the way in usually. Uh, so everybody gets to sign a contract. Yeah, that's where you came up with the name, right? Like dealing with monsters. Like yeah, you yes. <laughs> They're like friendly so, monsters though. Yeah. Right? The, like, so the friendly like monster totally thing. Yeah. So the friendly monster thing, that's one of the talks that I started giving at WordCamp, like in 2016, uh, dealing with problem clients, building fences around friendly monsters. 
And I wrote a book about that. And then I just called, I called it monster contracts out of that, uh, nice. out of that whole talk. It's, it's really catchy. I love it. Um, and Sorry, if you want me to admit listening... Oh, wait, hold on. I just got to tell one thing that I should probably wait till the end, but Nathan's given a discount to anybody on the show. He's given nice. a Divi chat discount for nice. monster contracts. We'll give you the deets at the end. What are you going to confess to Sarah? I'm going to confess something and everyone's going to be like, what? I don't have a contract. So what I have. What? You're right. That's I exactly know. what I said. So what I have is terms and conditions and mm -hmm. I have it stated in my proposal and in my invoices that by signing this and by paying the deposit, you are agreeing to my terms and conditions. So it's not technically a contract. They haven't signed it. I think think it slightly still covers me, but I probably will get my ass into gear after this. But yes, I do please. technically have terms and conditions that I update regularly, like a contract that I'm continually evolving. And they do cover all of these things that we're talking about. Um, but it is an interesting point of what terms and conditions are versus what is a contract and what does signing it mean? Because Technically, it states in a number of locations, when you pay this deposit, you are agreeing to my terms and conditions, which in essence is kind of a contract, but it's not written as a contract. So anyway, so that the, is my confession for the day. So, And a lot of folks do that, by the way, Sarah. I, I've heard that mm -hmm. over and over again. The, the challenge with that approach is... Quit, you know, if you're, especially if you're, my, my terms and conditions live on my website somewhere and I'm updating them. Well, which version of the terms and conditions did this client three years ago agree to, right? Yeah. So you've got version control issues and so forth. Um, and it may be different in Australia, in, in, in the States, especially in my state, I need a document with their signature if I'm going to, you know, if we ever have to do anything legally, which I've never had to, and hopefully I never do. Um, yeah. and one thing that I really do recommend though, and I, it sounds like you're doing it is a two document approach. So terms and conditions contract, I call it a master services agreement. It's a document that has all the rules of the road that do not change from project to project. Uh, Down with MSA. I, yeah. The it, MSA. It exactly. It didn't work. Uh, and then, um, you know, so that has the, the, basically in my MSA and what is in monster contracts, it's the, the website build and management is all wrapped up together. And if you offer other services that, you know, your terms and conditions for those can go in the master services agreement. They sign that once. So if you go back and do another project for a client later and the MSA hasn't really changed substantially, then all you have to do is give them a proposal because they've already agreed to the terms in the MSA. Um, yeah. And that's it's also really helpful if you have a larger client where there's multiple departments and whatever. And like the, the department that's going to sign the contract is not the one that's going to approve the proposal. Like you can deal with marketing on the proposal, but legal has to get the MSA. That's awesome because you can get, go, get it through legal one time and then you're golden for the rest of your time working with that client on other projects. Yeah, nice. Okay, Nathan. So just to clarify this, because these are all scary words. And if anybody else out there is like me, and I think some of y'all are, I'm sorry to say, you start hearing those sentences and your brain just goes, <laughs> like you just don't even, like you can't even make it to the end of the sentence because you don't want to face it. So what are the, what are the documents that we're talking about here? We have the proposal, I understand, yes. which is, yeah. that's what you're going to do. That's like the website's going to have this many pages and we're going to host it here, whatever. That's that. Yes. And what are the other documents that we're talking about? Yeah. Okay. So first of all, proposal and, you know, everybody's got their own way to do a proposal. I, I take a really simple approach to a proposal. Like I want frictionless. I want scope of work and price and sign here. That's it. I mean, if I, the, the proposal is not the place to sell. If you have to put sales language in proposal, you haven't done enough work. Like if you, if you're trying to sell with your document, the people sell documents don't sell. So Proposal is scope of work, price, sign here, right? Um, the, that defines this particular project of what we're going to do. And then you've got uh, an MSA or your contract that just gives the rules of the road for how you're going to build the site, what the process is, what the management thing looks like, you know, what some of the other uh, particular things like what happens if your contact form email doesn't get delivered to your inbox? You know, am I liable for that? You know, what happens if I've got an e-commerce site and the order notifications don't get to me? You know, how does that, you know, those are... You know, oh, oh, you want the site to work on Internet Explorer 5? Wait a minute. We got to, you know, <laughs> we're not, we're not doing that. 
Um, no. <laughs> right. So there lots of little things like that. All that's in the contract. That does not change from project to project. Does okay, so we got question? two documents. So the two MSA documents. is the contract. The contract. That we talk about. Okay, yeah. everybody got that? Yeah, yeah and so someone documents. in the chat was just asking, is the MSA part, is it part of monster contracts or yeah. is it the monster contract? It basically is. So if you, yeah. if you were, it's just different if you went inside it. monster contracts, yes, you would find two documents. There's a master services agreement and a website management agreement. The website management agreement is just an excerpt of the MSA that only applies if all you're doing is managing a website. But all that language is already in the contract for your bill. That is, the bigger document is for building and managing a website. It's the yeah. master agreement or the, the, you know, the, the larger agreement. Yeah. Uh, okay. We have another question from our pal, Steve, Steve Perks. Is a PDF with a digital signature sufficient and legally binding? Steve is in Scotland. So once again, and, yeah. we're not lawyers. Yeah. And so I'm not I had a, lawyer, a thing but... with um, like a thing a while back and um, a lawyer was telling me that digital signatures are really tricky they're kind of they are okay but equally there is a chance that if you had to go to court that it may not cover your butt as much as it could but they're kind of the best that we can do for most of the time at the moment and therefore yes it's fine but equally if it's something like really 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 important then you might want to actually get it physically signed so now, but that is... just seems like a pain in the ass to me is that referring to, so like, I feel like there's two ways to do that. One is like a PDF that they like annotate, right? Yeah. And a PDF viewer. And then the, the second is an actual like digital signature platform. Like a, Adobe has Adobe sign, right? And it actually, it's an e-signature, well, of course. Sign, or there's a lot of them, yeah. Yeah, but it does a, a time and date stamp and it logs your IP address. And I feel like there's a little more... Exactly. Um, yeah, it's yeah. just a little more sophisticated. Uh, and so that might hold up better than a yeah, a PDF yeah. with because I mean a PDF can be photoshopped and stuff like that. So Yeah. I like them to fax it to me on green paper once they've signed it <laughs> physically. Yeah. So I, I can't speak to other countries, Steve. I don't know what Scotland's uh, you'd, you'd want to talk to an attorney there. Uh in the United States, I know that digital signatures are legally binding. I mean, we did our whole home purchase a year ago digitally, you know, digital signatures. Yeah. Yeah. Same. So um, yeah, it, it's as long as you're, you know, like, like Tim said, as long as you're using some sort of signing service, you should be fine. But again, we'll sell I'm not them an attorney. We'll make, their website an NFT. we'll make their website an NFT. And there you go. Them. <laughs> On the blockchain. Uh, yeah. And uh, just throwing it out there, because a lot of people aren't even aware. If you have a creative cloud subscription say, with good. Adobe, Adobe sign is in that for free. Integrated. You don't have to pay extra for it. So, and it's, I think it's only for a certain creative. number of things, but unless you're like, crushing out some projects every month you're probably yeah and okay. if you're crushing out projects and you can you, you can, can afford, afford to it. yeah upgrade <laughs> <your thing. laughs> uh, also if you have um proposal software you can usually em just embed it in there because i believe it's just a text document isn't it nathan what you get with monster contracts same it's, as yeah. if you would get from your attorney or if you would write one yourself or whatever so you can you can use this within the system that you're already using. So yeah. we've switched over to Plutio and it has, you know, the proposal part. And then when they approve it, then it shows the contract. I know Dubsado does that same thing. You know, all the, all the major, the major ones. I don't know about better proposals. I assume that one has it yeah, as well. Yeah, there's a contract yeah. part of better proposals. So whatever the, um, whatever system you're using, you can sort of integrate these things um, into there. Oh man, we got so many questions. I know everybody's going to be That's asking tough. questions today. Yeah. Someone asked what MSA stands for again, Master Services Agreement. And that's not uh, an acronym that Nathan made up. That's a real that's thing, a thing in contracts, thing. like in the legal world and in lots of other industries. Uh, DocuSign. Yeah. DocuSign, HelloSign, all of those ones are all kind of the Adobe sign. They're all very cleverly named, as you can tell. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so let's see here. Uh, Okay, so Aaron says he gets them to actually print it and sign it and send a scanned version. Would that be considered a digital signature? I don't think so. I think the digital signature is where it's verified by that company. Like you have to prove that you are who you are or something and like it codes it into the PDF. But yeah, I think if you're going down the track of like getting an actual physical signature, um, 
in legal land, it has to like, you have to print two copies of it and you sign both of them and then you post them that and then they sign both of them and they post you one back and they keep one. Like that's when you're going down the like, and that might be like if something goes bad and therefore like you need some other whatever, whatever. So you wouldn't do that for a contract, but like that's where you're getting like super, super strict. Actually, people are signing it where there's a physical pen on a piece of paper and both of you would have a copy of both of you having signed it. But that's not for this sort of thing, I don't think. Yeah, it's those sorts of questions that need to be on your short list when you identify a local attorney that you can work with. You know, every business needs to have a good accountant, a good attorney. Both of those, if they're good, they're going to save you money in the long run. You want to have a conversation with a local attorney and ask those questions. What does my what do my local laws require as far as a signed document? If every anything ever goes here, uh, you know, here's the contract I'm using. Make sure all the local language is correct. Uh, yeah. th- those are things you, you absolutely want to have a conversation with a local attorney. As another <clears throat> little service that I use, I don't, I don't know if you guys have heard of Legal Shield. It used to be called Prepaid Legal, which was a much better name, but I think they thought it was a little corny sounding or not trustworthy. But um, I'm fortunately grandfathered in at a fairly low rate, but they're still reasonable and you can, it's sort of like rent an attorney or something it's like it's like a legal subscription basically so you have access to this service if you sign up for it i'm not an affiliate or anything but like if you if you sign up for this service then you have so many times over the course of a year that you can reach out um with your little account number and they'll connect you to one of however many local attorneys are in your plan and who are available at that time or whatever just routes phone calls to them and you can actually speak to the attorney and ask them questions and things and then one of the services among many of them is uh verifying contracts for you you can send them so many contracts a year and they will go through them and you know give their advice or verify that they are sound or not so that that also if you're concerned about the price tag on meeting with an attorney, or if you may have a few things over the course of a year that you wanted to do, that might be a cost-effective way to do it. Yeah, nice. Um, And I think that's probably only in the U.S., I would guess. Sorry, Sarah. Yeah, and I Mm, want to add to something Nathan said about hiring a attorney and accountant, you know, they save you money in the long run. And so, yeah, whether you're hiring someone one-on-one or using a service like Stephanie mentioned, in my opinion, you can't put a price on peace of mind, like knowing that like you're protected because you, you know, you went through the the proper professionals to oversee, you know, whether that's your taxes or your legal stuff, like being able to like rest easy and, and sleep well with peace of mind, knowing that you're covered, like you can't put a price on that. Like put on your, uh, your grown up pants and do the professional business yeah. thing and hire the right professionals. And I'm like singing to the choir. Cause I'm kind of behind on my taxes because of a couple <laughs> complicated things. Uh, so <laughs> I'm, like, I'm needing to like preach to myself here a little bit. <laughs> I've gone down the tax route, but I have had on my list of things for a number of years to go to a lawyer and deal with this stuff. And I got the prices for it. Um, and this year, probably in the next couple of months, I'm going to have the finances for it. And so I've just been working my way towards it. And it's one of those things, right? Like we have to be where we're at and in our business, sometimes the money just isn't there right in the beginning. And so you can do what you can do and do it. It's almost like not putting insurance on your house, right? Like it's kind of a stupid idea. It's not very good, but if you don't have the money, you are choosing to run that risk that if there's a fire, well, you lose everything. So you can choose to run that risk and we all have to make choices in our business of where where our finances are at. And you can use something that is going to hopefully cover your butt, like the monster contract or like whatever you want to use. Um, In Australia, for my terms and conditions, I used a service called legal123.com.au. So there's all sorts of services where, you know, you can get something that's written by a lawyer. It's not going to be exactly right for your business, but it gets you going. And maybe you only spend $300 on that thing or whatever. Um, but you're not spending the two or three thousand dollars that you're going to need to spend on a um, lawyer reviewing yourself. And then as you get further along, um, you're ready to spend that money. So I think we have to be where we're at and we can't be too harsh on ourselves. But equally, you're running a risk and you, as long as you know you're running that risk, well, it's OK. <laughs> like That's where you're at and you can work towards it. 
I think if you've been waiting for a sign from the universe to get your contracts in order, <laughs> this is today. today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what, oh, what it's definitely, de- it's definitely in there. Yeah. What you're describing, like if you were to take any contract you grab online, uh, monster contracts or any of the other ones that are out there, uh, you sh- once you kind of get it, you can put your processes in it, you know, make it how you want it. A typical attorney should charge you an hour or two to evaluate that contract. So usually you're talking less than $500 to get the contract oh. evaluated. America is good. <laughs> now, if you had the, the attorney write something from scratch, you're going to get into thousands of dollars. Yeah. But you know what I typically hear from people who bought monster contracts is the attorney took a couple of hours and had minimal, cha- minimal feedback. Yeah. Uh, minimal nice. changes. That's awesome. Um, so we're, we're just about halfway through the show, guys. I want to just take a quick second and thank uh, everybody who tuned in live with us tonight. We had a couple First timers here. I know Black Jays 13. I don't know who you are. Tell us your name. We'll give you a shout out. But uh, he or she seems pretty um, pumped to be joining tonight with us. First time live. So uh, thanks for being here. And uh, Miro and Carlos, thanks for keeping it down, holding it down in the in the chat. Keeping the law and order. We appreciate you guys. It gets rowdy with these Divi chat fans, you know. So uh, and also, guys, please give us a thumbs up. Go leave us a review if you have a minute. We did just get a, um, two topic requests this week uh, from somebody else who's a longtime listener. So if you guys have any Yay! requests, you can post them over on our Facebook page. You can um, shoot them to I- any of us if you have our personal contacts, if we're c- connected on the socials, or uh, you can fill in the form on our website, divi.chat. Yeah, and, and even if it's something show. that you're not sure that if we've covered it, or maybe you know we've covered it, but it's been a while, like... Tell us what you want to hear because like things are constantly changing in this world. And so, uh, yeah, we're happy to revisit topics uh, as long as it wasn't like last week or something. Totally. Now, I thought maybe we we could switch gears a tiny bit and sort of break down what are the sections or the main things like what are the things that we really want to be sure that we are covering ourselves for what either what are the sections of our contract or what are the scenarios however we want to view it what are the scenarios that we want to make sure that our butts are covered on and if we have enough time at the end i thought maybe we'd tell some horror stories of bad things that happen so start thinking <laughs> if you have any like scary stories of dealing with monster clients or whatever in the chat too if you've got a good story put it in the put it in the chat but first up what are the what are the top sort of scenarios that we want to make sure we're covering ourselves for. I mean, I got one. I mean, at the end of the day, it's probably the most important and that's payment. Like Mm -hmm. when are you getting paid? How are you getting paid? Those types of things. If the project stalls, making sure you still get paid for what you've done rather than having to wait for a, a project that may never end in order to get paid. Yeah. Like for example, if you build the website, but they never give you the content. Yes. So essentially you're kind of like 80% there. At that point, what happens? I think that's a really, that's probably one of the most common scenarios is yeah. if your normal terms are whatever they are, um, then you need something written in there that explains, well, if you don't give me the stuff, <laughs> you still have to give me some money. Yeah. So that's actually the, the payment terms that are written in my contract. It's a, it's a 50, 25, 25. So it's half up front to get started. 25% 30 days after that. And then 25% 30 days after that or launch, whichever comes first. Yeah, nice. I like that. That's really good. Um, uh, termination. Did you guys say that? I was distracted by the chat. No, we haven't got Which that. what I just went through. <laughs> yeah. So and so that would be from thing. both ends, right? Like, so if either either the provider or the client decides this is not working, we need to end this. How does it end? What does that mean? Who gets what? Who has to pay what? <laughs> um, there's lots of parts of that. It's not even just the money side of it, but it's the thing of, okay, well, how much of it do you now own versus how much do I own? Um, what do I have to hand over versus what don't I have to hand over? Right. All so when that. I've got 85, 90% of a site done, they've paid half because I didn't do the yeah. 50, 25, 25. And they want to cancel right then. Like, and they say, please turn over all of our things before we yeah. get really mad at you. You know, mm, and, and, and the so- contract intellectual property shifts when the accountants uh, when the when the account of the client hits a zero balance. 
Mm. Yeah. Love it. I actually had a client recently. Um, we did a logo for them and they, this wasn't a horror story, but it was just one of those things where they were being extra cautious. And then I had to be on the other side of it a little bit where we'd done a logo and they'd ask the question, like, who owns this logo once we make our payment? And I'd said really clearly, like, as soon as you make the payment, you 100% own this. Like, I can't guarantee that you can trademark it. Like, I can't guarantee that someone else isn't going to copy it, but you will 100% own it. But they still wanted me to sign a deed of something or other. Um, that and, and like it was all legal language and I then was on the other side of like, oh, what does that mean? Like because there was <laughs> things in it like if if they face legal costs because of the logo something or other, therefore I have to like cover the costs of it. I was like, oh, my God, what is this? So that's whoever the owns it, the right? NFT Where, like, <laughs> owns the intellectual property. Put it in so, the blockchain, you guys. That is really a good point, though, because a lot sometimes a client will push back on a legal document like that you, that you don't understand, or you know, you get into it, and you know, I mean, these attorneys will put language in there that they understand what it means, but regular people mm -hmm. don't understand the implications. And yeah. so, you know, number one, this is a great opportunity for something like Legal Shield, or if you have an attorney that you're working with to review those things. But yeah. second you can cross that stuff out and go back and say, I'm not signing this. Like this yeah. is ridiculous. Uh, yeah. I've, you know, I, I'm happy to say you own the logo and it's yours, but I'm not going to hold you hard. You know, I'm not going to hold you harmless in a court of law. I'm a small business. Yeah. You're a big company. You guys handle that. Yeah. <laughs> what a boss move. I love it. <laughs> I'm not signing I signed that. It. <laughs> <laughs> so another very, very common, uh, I guess, scenario where you have to enforce your contract is scope creep. That yes. is super common. So making sure you have scope creep in your contract, what exactly that means, how it's defined. And uh, yeah. So I love scope creep. Love it. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Charge more. I love it. As, no long as, as long as corresponding price creep comes along with mm -hmm. it, right? Yeah, because, there we go. You know, the last two projects we had were simple brochure sites. And they increased the scope and it, it bumped up the price like 40%. I'm, I love it. Bring it on. Yeah. It's more work. It's more money. Bring it. Um, it's just when as they, long as you're handling it, right? Yes. And it's, you know, hopefully you have a reasonable client that understands that I can't do more work and charge you the same amount. That's not how this works. That's like, <laughs> you know, go, going into a car dealership and, you know, wanting additional options and not expecting to pay the difference. So I well, had, that, uh, I've got a story to go with this one, right? Oh, that happened this week. So we built this website. This was one of the ones from before Christmas. Everyone's heard my stories about my before Christmas ones. It fully exploded. There was all these extra jobs. We've just finished it last week and launched, which is great. But along the way, they suddenly said, you know, we need um, all of our blogs migrated. And that wasn't in like any of the information. And we need portfolio items. And so we're like building all these things. And I had said to them, you understand this is going to cost more. I've already given you a price per page of like what the extras is. He had said, yes, 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 yes. I then went to do the invoice and I was like, holy cow, this is a lot more than like what the original thing was. And then he emailed back and was like, whoa, I did not expect that you were, that it was going to go this much. Like, and the mm. thing was for each portfolio item, I hadn't charged the per page item. I charged like significantly less. I charged two hours per page, like just to kind of cover. He was not happy, but I didn't have specifics in writing. Like I had said a number of times, like this is going to be extra, but it hadn't specified about the portfolio. I had to meet in the middle in the end, which was unfortunate uh, for me. But again, it's that learning lesson, right? Like, you have to be really, really specific so that you can, if it's not in your contract, that at least it's fully written out in words in your emails that says, I told you that it was going to be this much and therefore that's what my invoice is. So I learned a hard lesson. That's tough. We've all learned those lessons. Yeah. Yeah, we have. That's, that's like what we were saying at the beginning. You know, it's easy to think about the contract as the cover your butt thing, but also it really is which was mentioned just sort of briefly but like it's the expectation guideline as well so yeah. that you can set those expectations we talk about that so much on the show how you can just avoid so many problems by being clear and upfront and communicating and getting things documented and all of that so that things are understood because if that guy had understood that it's a yes. non-issue and that's what he said like if i had have understood that fully 
I would have gone down a different path. I didn't understand. And he wasn't trying to be awful. He was being very right. businesslike, but he was basically saying like, I did not get that that's what this was going to do to this project. Um, can we review it? So he wasn't being horrible and I met him in the middle, but it did make me think it is really important, even if it's just an email, but you make it really clear. And I was in such a rush. I didn't. And I thought I had clarified, but clearly what was in my head was not what was in his head. And I needed to be more clear. That's fine. We can add those 29 portfolios. Just so you know, this is going to be an extra, whatever it is per, per portfolio item are you okay with this? And having them respond and say, yes, that is fine. Um, I missed that step and therefore I lose out on some money because I missed that step. It's so, uh, it's so frustrating that feeling, isn't it? When you're like, yeah. oh, like not only do you have an unhappy client, but yeah. like, you know, you screwed something up. Like that's not a monster client. That's like something you're like, oh, I know I did that wrong. And, and you have to pay for it. And it's like, oh, it's oh. all right. So, Absolutely. So you, we never waste, never waste a mistake, right? So we pick exactly. up, we change our process. So next time, yeah. whenever a client has a scope increase, we're going to send a document that outlines exactly what we're going to do. Again, scope of work and a price and have them. It's, it's a, essentially a secondary proposal that, um, you know, that includes that, or, you know, you could include yeah. a change budget in your project. It works especially well if it's a larger project where maybe some of the things aren't defined and you might be tempted to pad the numbers a little bit. Well, just include a, a, a change budget. Um, I, th I think I see Beth Livingston over there in the chat. She's a she big proponent here, of that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in and fact, that's we had, uh, we had Beth on the show. I'm just looking in, in October. She talked about Change, change budgets and things like that. Um, set yourself apart with project management, uh, episode 222. So if you guys are interested in this topic, hop back over to that episode. It was a really popular one. Yeah. That, so actually Beth's change budget actually incorporated that into my, it's, it's some alternate language in the monster contract if you use that. Yeah, nice. Yeah, it is cool. Um, somebody asked back in the chat if it was easy to, sorry, I lost your comment, whoever it was, but yeah, it was, it's a piece of cake to add a contract into Plutio. It's it's built for it. Like it's built to have a contract and it's just text. You just you go and edit the contract with your particulars and the way that you do your business and your payment schedule and all that. And then it just gets dumped right in as text. So no sweat. So there's a great question. I don't, if I'm am I allowed to hit a question that's in the chat? Heck yeah. Uh, really? so Anders oh, asked yeah. a question uh, about ten minutes ago about have has anybody been uh, gone to court or, you know, how does, you know, how do you deal with that? Right. And it's funny because just a couple of days ago, a photo memory came up that gave me some PTSD about, uh, <laughs> it was, uh, I was served, uh, a summons to appear of, at a federal grand jury oh. because a client of mine was being investigated by the food and drug administration for faulty mm. claims, blah, 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 blah. Oh like gosh. he was getting skewered by the feds wow. and you know, you don't go to a grand jury without an attorney. You just don't. Uh, right. But what happens, you know, even if you don't do something wrong, your client does something wrong. What happens? Well, your contract needs to protect you with some hold harmless language that makes the client liable for any legal oh. counsel you have to retain uh, right. And it also spells out the fact that we will fully cooperate with the lawful requests of law enforcement. Uh, so when the FDA subpoenaed my email communication with the client, the client now can't come back to me and say, well, you shouldn't have da 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 da. I had a lawful yeah. request and I responded to it. Uh, thankfully, I've never had, I've never been sued, never had to sue. Uh, but another piece of language that's going to be super helpful is uh, a limitation of liability. And so there's something like that in my contract that Regardless of anything else, any other circumstances, the maximum liability that you can have is, you know, X amount, or in my case, it's is the, the amount that I've collected on the client's account in the last six months. So even if I get sued, right. the max I can get sued for is that amount. Yeah. So they oh, can't come that. along and say, uh, you did this and therefore we lost $10 million worth of business. Therefore exactly. we're suing you for $10 million. Yeah, like, exactly. Now, again, that's yeah. one of those state or location specific pieces there may be some states that don't allow that sort of language. That's where a local attorney would be helpful to review a document and just say, yeah, I can't do that. But in my yeah. case, I can. Uh, another really important part of a contract is relating to if you have to go to court is it's a legal thing called the choice of law and forum. And that is basically if you're going to sue me, 
it's going to occur here where I live, not in some other part yeah, of the country right. where if I have to go answer a claim, you know, I'm going to have to fly or, you know, put a hotel oh, and who knows yeah. how long it's going to last and whatever. Now, if you're going to sue me, it's going to be right here in Shelby County, Alabama, just south of Birmingham, where people love small businesses. And, yeah, uh, you know, we're going to do it that way. Yeah, good idea. Um, and then, so the, Anders Trustrup, hope I said that right, um, is the one who asked this question. We've got it up on the screen here if you are watching. It, but he ends it, his question about disputes saying, I just feel like suing people for minor things is a very American thing. Yeah, for yeah, it. totally. Yeah. So uh, in Australia, it's really <laughs> yes, it not is. as big of a deal. Like the idea of getting sued is so like it would have to be really extraordinary for that to be a thing that would actually happen like it just isn't um people can threaten to take you to a triple c which is like um the oh i can't remember what it's for but like consumer rights kind of thing and so you can kind of go and you can put in a petition and you can say this thing happened with this company but often nothing really comes out of it it's more the biggest part of it is like a threat that you know um they're going to take you there and therefore they do have rights and they can take um, action on you. So you could end up getting fined or, you know, it could go into the public realm that someone has taken you to ACCC and therefore, you know, you get a bad name for it. But that that's kind of, that's the most where you'd go in Australia unless it was really big and really bad and there was really big implications and then you might get sued. But I mean, people can threaten whatever they want to threaten, of course, but it's just not as big of a deal yeah. here. I'd still we want have, to cover my butt, but it's just not yeah. like people don't do I it mean, over stupid, petty things. We have Judge Judy. Have you seen that show? Oh, yeah. Americans are insane. <laughs> but also uh, we have small claims court, which mm -hmm. you can take people to, which I think is up to 10K, which is a small claim when you're thinking of a lawsuit. But it depends on the state, I think. Yeah, I think it does the, the too. Amount, yeah. But that would still hurt if somebody yes. laid that on you. You know, yeah, 10K yeah. would still hurt if you're, you know, a small business yourself. So and, well, and even regardless, a threat is going to hurt you. Like even if they're not planning on doing anything, even them just saying to you, I'm unhappy is enough for me to get hurt. Yes. It gets in your head. But then if they're saying, and I am talking to a lawyer, well, even just that is going to hurt me whether or not they act on it. Yeah. And, and even if the, uh, the fear of legal action is not necessarily, you know, on the table, depending on culture and location and so forth, the, 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 the importance of a good contract is clarity. Uh, so yeah. and it's, it's actually two sided from your client's perspective. You've spelled out exactly how the project is going to work. This is the process you're agreeing to it. It just it, it provides clarity on how this relationship is going to go. But also this is something I, I, I realized for myself and I've seen it happen in people that I coach as well. As soon as you do the work and you define your process and you put it in a document, this switch flips in your brain about this is how I do things. And it's like this whole level up that gives you more confidence in how you deal with clients, period. So it's it's good on both counts. I, I've felt that happen to me. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, we've got a couple more comments here. Um, uh, Brenda... Brenda asks, is Judge Judy a real thing? <laughs> yes, she is. Have you not seen this? Go go YouTube that because it's nuts, the things that these people fight for. And she does not take anybody's crap. So Judge Judy's Judge Judy. to someone else now or something? Isn't there Judge a Judy, Judge? highest paid television persona in the country. Insane. But like by far. Because she's been doing it forever too. Um, and then Steve is adding a new contract to his clause. This is a whole other subject. It's not a Google font, honest. <laughs> that right there is some classic geek humor. And I applaud you, Steve Perks, because nobody outside of this room would find that funny, but we all do. Oh, my. So, uh, yeah. And uh, eMedia e Hosting. Who are you, eMedia Hosting? I always want to know who people are, like their names. We have Small Claims Court in the UK. Something like 50 bucks to file the claim. I don't know what it goes up to what you can sue people for so anyway yeah th like i said though even if it's a small claim you still don't want to get it um nope. i mean listen we are the country where someone sued mcdonald's because their coffee was hot and they spilled it on themselves so now all <laughs> of our cups everywhere have to say caution contents may be hot oh my god some of the cautions that you see on things are just <laughs> the most hilarious where you're like why on earth is this a caution? But clearly it's because someone decided to like 
speak up about it and therefore now it's a caution and you're like oh yeah. my god that's ridiculous yeah no it's it's nuts yeah uh okay so um we've got just a few more minutes um we can we can go around and do some uh final thoughts or if you have a a, hor- a good horror story that you like to tell do any of you guys in the chat have a bad story that you didn't have a contract cover the one that came to my mind i'll just start while i give you guys a chance to talk uh the this isn't so much contract as it was just controlling my scope and i had an e-commerce site one of my first e-commerce sites and um I was like, oh yeah, like 50 products. Sure, I'll add 50 products. No big deal, right? And then it was 50 products that each had 35 or 40 variations, variations, like thumbnails and stuff. And I didn't even know how to do that. Like I had to go figure it all (laughs) out. I had to buy stuff to do it. And it was like, I think just those bits alone ended up taking close to 50 hours, which is what you would budget for like an entire e-commerce project. Yeah. So I was like, I had to just suck it up and do it. I paid somebody to help me do it. And I just, uh, and then I was like, now I say, we will, in, we will put three projects with a maximum of four variations. <laughs> like <laughs> that is in every contract that has yeah. a, an e-commerce element because boy, did I, oh man, I went in the hole on that project bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. And, and I'm going to advertise for that. Uh, Nathan here. It I think it's right on monstercontracts.com. It talks about battle tested. Mm. And I think that's right there makes it worth every penny because if you try to come up with something yourself, some sort of contract, or even if you hire a lawyer, chances are it's not going to cover those specific things like scope creep and stuff like that that are really specific to creative yeah. professionals uh, providing a service. And so having something where it's like, okay, 20 plus years of uh, Nathan's experience plus Nathan's other mistakes. Pe- Nathan's <laughs> mistakes, exactly. <laughs> plus other people who have contributed yeah. and, you know, it's been refined and he stuff was like being that. Nice. Call yeah. experience. <laughs> Where uh, those things that are very specific to web design, yeah. like the scenarios that Stephanie mentioned with scope creep and e commerce and stuff like that, like you want to be protected. Uh, and so even if you don't use it, exactly as is and you refine it by getting a lawyer which nathan encourages like oh my gosh having something battle tested is worth every yeah. penny uh, rather rather than starting from scratch and having to slowly refine it on your own i think also what it could kind of do is it's a little bit like when we talk about setting the boundaries with a client like when you say you can contact me through email but not through text message or you can Like, it's not that that has to be in the contract, but it's about setting up the boundaries and the expectation of people so that when they come in, they know a little bit more about what's expected. And it's that thing we talk about a lot where when someone crosses it, the first bit of the line, that's the time because it's not mean, it's not a yucky time where as soon as they cross that little bit of the line or the little bit of the contract that you can kind of say, hey, no worries, but just bringing you back to the contract that's not actually included and therefore and whatever it is and at that point it's not nasty and so you it's not like you're at that point where you're having to say well you sign this contract and it says this and therefore give me my money or whatever it is but that thing of we've both got the expectations maybe you didn't read it but we've just crossed over a little bit so let's just remind ourselves both that this is where we're at and um then it's not so nasty i think Love and it's it. all up front, which is a good thing. Yeah, I, and I, I like that because it's like in, in most cases you want the contract for the bad clients, but even for the good clients, sometimes they just need that polite nudge and a reminder. Yeah. And it and then it's like, oh, okay, so they're not necessarily a bad client that's trying to take advantage. They just, you know, they're not used to doing this type of, of project, so they just need a little bit of Well, they clarity. misunderstand things. Life yeah. with my client. Like, I think, I think sometimes we can feel like something super obvious. Like, we understand... Like my client, okay, same same client came back to me because he's trying to clarify now. And he said, okay, so if we wanted to add some pop-ups, like, so for all the team, instead of having individual team pages, what if like when you click on the team name, it pops up all the information about them? Is that going to cost me as much as a whole new page? And he's clarifying, which is great, but equally it gives me the chance now that we've had this whole other thing and we've met in the middle that now I can go back to him and say, well, 
even though it looks like it's all happening on the one page, actually that is me creating a whole separate page. It's just that it loads within the one page, but it's still going to take me the time as if we had a whole page on its own. It's just whether or not you want it to load in the one page. We've now had the other bit. Therefore, this bit is not nasty. It's not mean. It's me just saying, yes, it is still as complicated. He didn't understand. He's clarified. We're all good now. So I think that's the part of it that can be good. Yeah, because a lot of clients, they believe in the magic keystrokes of web designers where it's just like, boom, 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 done, project completed. Yeah, it's like once you know right. the exact you know code, you just type it and then the it, website's it's done. It's not that way? It's not that way? No. <laughs> I mean, I haven't I found the go, magic boom, boom, combination boom. yet. <laughs> but like once <laughs> once they realize that, oh, like this is hours and hours and hours of work, then it's it's good. And that contract provides that clarity so that they don't just think you're charging them tens of thousands of dollars for a couple of keystrokes. Yeah. Andrew has a good point that your contract sets out a few guidelines, professional behavior, expectations, and shows that you care. So this is that we should get away from feeling like this is an ugly thing that we're trying to put down rules and restrictions yeah. on our clients. This is us caring for them and protecting not only our interests, but also theirs. If we can convey that to them as well, because there's also things in Nathan's contract, excuse me, for example, that they talk about like what happens if we as the web provider want to terminate the contract, you know, and what their rights are, if we need, like how much notice we need to give them and what they get in return and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And I think that expectation thing of like, if, I haven't seen that contract specifically, but that thing of you can expect to hear from me. Like if you email me, you can expect to hear from me within 48 business hours or like whatever you want to have in there, but something so that they can know, well, you're not just going to ghost me. And if you do ghost me, these are my rights as a part of that. So I think that can be really nice as well. And I think there's something about it being formal, but in a nice way of saying, I'm a small business, you're a small business. Like we're both in it together. Like it's hard for both of us. So let's make sure it's a good experience for both of us rather than, because I think sometimes we need to remind them they're not the only small business. Sometimes I think they can feel like this is my small business and you're doing this thing for me, but being mm -hmm. able to say, yeah, and I'm a small business too. And by you not paying me, that impacts my small business also. So let's make this fair for both of us um, can be a good part of it. Totally. Guys, we've, we're just about out of time. Um, Nathan, thank you so much for coming, especially last minute for sharing all of this expertise with us. Uh, do you want to tell the folks where they can go to find out more about you, about Monster Contracts, etc.? Yeah, sure. So uh, Monster Contracts is monstercontracts.com. Uh, if, uh, if you use the code DiviChat, you get 20% off the purchase of Monster Contracts. Oh, nice. So, yep, yep. DiviChat, just all together, no space, 20% off. Um, Thank if you, you want to learn, that. yeah, yeah, sure. Absolutely. Um, if you want to learn more at me, I'm Nathan Ingram.com. Just like my name. Easy to find. Nice. And he's in the Facebook group. So you're in my Facebook group. I'm pretty sure. Right? I am. Yeah. Yes. He's around. He's around. Yeah. If you guys have any legal questions whatsoever, uh, absolutely do not contact me <laughs> <laughs> under any circumstances. The, the fear in his eyes just then as you were half yeah. through that sentence. <laughs> Yeah, don't call me for sure. Yeah, call you <laughs> All right. Thanks so much, everybody. We will see you next week for another hot topic here on Divi Chat. Take Bye, care. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.